Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, independent climate scientist, independent of uh, fame and fortune. Of course, it's coming, it's, we're approaching Christmas, so I've got my Christmas tree here and I've got my uh, decoration on it. It's not a partridge, it's not a pear tree, but, uh, you know, it's the best I can do right now. And of course, I've got my king here to signify all of the chess playing that I do to um, under, you know, to get sort of system thinking, big thinking. You know, scientists are like the individual chess pieces on the board, whereas I'm I'm playing the game of chess. I'm trying to to uh, see the big picture. You know, look down and try to interpret all of the parts and so on. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about a new paper. Well, today I was going to talk all about the Arctic report card. I was going to go into detail about all of the different sections of it. It was a report that came out just recently. But instead of that, um, a paper has just been hit the airwaves and uh, had a lot of coverage. It's about tipping points in the climate system. Regime shifts. You go from one stable state to another stable state. And while, you do, while you're undergoing that transition, there's all kinds of turmoil. The system is very highly nonlinear. So instead of a slow, steady increase, which people expect with climate, you get this tipping point and you get this wrenching change, almost like a vertical line to a different state. So we're undergoing this transition presently with climate. You know, one of the best examples is the Arctic. I mean, the Arctic is losing sea ice and snow cover exponentially. It's becoming a much warmer place. And there's all of the all of these long ranging connections, these cascading connections. Um, there's all kinds of feedbacks, whether they're visible or hidden, and there's all kinds of teleconnections. So it's something that happens in one local region can have far reaching implications and be a driver of change in in other regions. So Let's get right into the uh, paper, the peer-reviewed paper, which just came out, which is here. But how do you access this paper? So this is my Twitter feed, uh, at Paul H. Beckwith. And basically, so this is where I talk about jet streams. I usually pin the previous videos that I posted, so that was just a few days ago. Um, and here we go, cascading regime shifts, and there's a preprint on bio -ar -ar arxiv or whatever, however you pronounce that. So there's a preprint print, pre -print of this paper, um, and uh, you know, of course, you know, the jet streams are a big part of these uh, connections from one region to another region, you know. Um, but here we go. I've been talking, more accurately yelling, about cascading tipping points for about a decade. Finally, scientific studies are now doing so. They're actually yelling. They're starting to yelling. The risks of domino effect of tipping points is greater than thought, says the study. Well, no surprise there. So if we look at this paper here, scientists warn policymakers not to ignore links and stress that every action counts. So policymakers have severely underestimated the risks of ecological tipping points. So this study shows that 45% of all potential environmental collapses are interrelated and could amplify one another. It was published in the journal Science, although this is a pay, there's a paywall for this journal. Uh, but there is a preprint, uh, which I'll show you the link to. Basically, it highlights how overstressed and overlapping natural systems are, combining to throw us a growing number of welcome surprises. Of course, in climate change, everything happens faster than expected. The risks are much greater than assumed because the interactions are dynamic. Um, according to this guy at the Stockholm Resilience Center, which is a place that is doing great work. The important message is to recognize the wickedness of the problem that humanity faces. Now, wickedness of a problem, you know, it's a wicked problem. It's a very difficult problem. It's a very complex problem. There's a lot of 
nonlinear connections. There's a lot of feedbacks. It's very, it's very, it's wicked for the person studying it, trying to understand all the links. So, for example, you know, ecosystem transitions. We can talk about states from tipping from one state to another, often irreversible, except for on long time scales, like coral reefs bleaching. Then they become overrun by algae. Forests becoming savannas and then grasslands. Think of the uh, rainforest. Ice sheets melting into oceans. So this study cross-referenced 30 types of shift to look at the impacts they might have on one another and society. Only 19% were completely isolated. 36% share a common cause or a common driver, if you like, but not, were not likely to interact but 45% had the potential to create either a one-way domino effect or mutually reinforcing feedback. So A causes B, B then causes A to increase and back and forth like a cycle, like a loop. For example, the mutually reinforcing feedbacks, Arctic ice sheets and boreal forests. So when the Arctic ice sheets melt, there's less ice to reflect the sun's heat, temperature of the planet rises, increases the risk of forest fires in the boreal forest, puts carbon into the air, adds to the greenhouse effect, melts more ice, causes more fires, so the, the forest um, can't regrow and you end up getting grasslands and savanna um, since grass is much more faster growing. And um, yeah, so although geographically distant, one amplifies the other. And then there's a two-way, a one-way domino type effect, coral reefs and mangrove forests. When coral reefs are destroyed, it weakens coastal defenses. Mangroves are exposed to storms and ocean surges uh, because they're no longer, the, these, these storms and surges are not broken up by reefs, so the mangroves then suffer. You know, deforestation of the Amazon, multiple cascading effects. It weakens the rain systems, forests become savanna, they don't store as much carbon, there's reduced water supplies for big cities and crops, more pressure for land clearance. Okay, uh, so these tipping points are increasingly accepted to explain climate change that's happening with more speed and ferocity than computer models have predicted. Computer models have failed miserably at predicting these cascading feedbacks and tipping points and linkages. Um, and that's to, you know, it's very difficult, I'm not knocking the programmers, but we need to look, go to common sense as opposed to, you know, have, there's been way too much trust in models. For example, tipping of the West Antarctic ice sheet wasn't even on the radar 10 years ago. But now we're getting large chunks of ice coming off. We may have already passed tipping points on some of these ice sheets. The author, one of the authors says, we're surprised at the rate of change in the Earth's system. So much is happening at the same time and at a faster speed than what we thought 20 years ago. That's a real concern. We're heading even faster towards the edge of a cliff. Uh, well, I would, re I would rephrase that and say that we're, we're already over the cliff and we're heading rapidly uh, downwards, being pulled down. Okay, um, so there's a lot of, so this is a statistical mapping study. Um, anyway, let's get into the study. So if you go to BioRxiv, there is a study cascading regime shifts within and across scales. This site is a preprint server for biology. Then you can download the PDF from this site, and here we are. Okay, so cascading regime shifts within and across scales. We're talking about spatial scales and across the surface of the Earth, and also temporal scales, okay? Things that are linked in time. So we get these regime shifts, right? So you go from one state to another state, very rapid change. Abrupt change, persistent critical transitions in the function and structure of systems. It's largely unknown how these transitions will interact, whether one will increase the likelihood of another or simply correlate at distant places known as teleconnections. 
So they explore two types of cascading effects here. A domino effect creates one-way dependencies. One small domino tips, hitting another one, hitting another one. I don't know if you've seen the video where you have a little tiny minuscule domino and it causes one larger to tip and tip and then at the other side you get this massive wall-sized domino that tips. <coughs> okay, once they're all down, it's basically a one-way transition. There's also a uh, case where hidden feedbacks produce two-way interactions, okay? So A causes B, it reinforces A, causes B to increase, and so on. Many of those happen up in the Arctic, okay? Uh, there's a control case of driver sharing. So one driver or impact or external forcing causes a change in one system somewhere and also causes a change in another system somewhere else. That would correlate the two um, resulting changes. So it's looked like it, this is examined as a network. Think of the brain network. The neurons are all connected together. You know, neurons that fire together, wire together. So when you get um, some, you know, a neural network triggered, then there's a whole set of cascading things that happen. So 45% of these pairwise combinations exist. Okay, that's one of the key findings. Driver sharing is very common, more common in aquatic systems, whereas these hidden feedbacks are more common in terrestrial and earth system tipping points. Okay, so basically um, it's an excellent paper. I suggest that you bring it up and have a look at it. And <laughs> it's just, um, like I say, it's hitting the, the press around the world right now. And let's look at what they're actually showing. Okay, and uh, so here we go for, for the, uh, you know, the diagrams. So I'll try to explain some of these diagrams. So, so here we go. We have, we, we have cases where the driver, the driving force is shared between different effects, different regions. We can have domino effects occurring we can have hidden feedback effects occurring. So if there's all of these variables like sea surface temperature, glacier loss, each of these boxes is a different variable and it's repeated across here. So look at the diagonal, that's the same variable, nothing is there because it's, you know, the effect is the same. Um, so what you have here is the intensity of the color is, represents the connection of the two links. And what you can see is that some of the effects here are very highly correlated to other effects and causing them. This is, a, this is what the response generally looks if there's driver shearing. It's pretty uniform grid here. Um, domino effects, there's more structure if you like. Um, and hidden feedbacks, A causes B, and so on. So if there's a regime shift one, we have follow the arrows. So something happens, A, it affects C here, the arrows this way, and then C in turn affects D, and D feedback, feeds back and affects C, and this loop gets stronger, and B also can affect D here. Okay, so different factors. So you get these two things are interconnected uh, because they share drivers. They could be on different parts of the world. You can have regime shift two here where A affects C and it feeds back and affects F and F affects E. And then when you combine these things, so you, you have these different regime shifts. You have A here, you have a, a state here or a state here, you can tip between two different points. You don't really go in the middle. Um, and uh, okay, so you get all these different connections and then you have domino effects where A affects B, you know, that affects C, D, back here, these type of loops, okay? Or C uh, affects F, that breaks into, uh, affects G, affects H, affects I, feeds back to F, so interrelated, longer range effects, um, and there's also so, so basically, this is the the dot is the thing that's happening, whether it be glacial ice loss, Greenland melt, uh, rainforest going, the linkages to another effect is the arrows, and you get all these different patterns here, and I'll explain this in more detail, um, but this is like a statistical analysis. Okay, so I'll continue in another video. Thanks.